Okay, so don't even laugh at me, but I've been struggling with this for days on and off. You see that, that bolt down in there? I'm trying to pop the primary clutch off the snowmobile. I put a bolt down in there and bent it apparently. Can't get it out. So I drilled it. Oh, I can't believe it. So this, this clutch fits on the crankshaft and it's tapered and this bolt, this funky looking bolt, right? This thing here is what goes down through it and this end, right? This end right here screws into the crankshaft and that's what holds that primary clutch on there. So to take it off, they make a, or they sell a $40 tool or $50 tool that goes down there, puts it on the end of the crankshaft and has a three quarter inch fine thread out here. Well, what I did is I thought, wow, I'm gonna manufacture my own. What if I put a bolt down in there and then use this bolt to screw in the end of it to push on said bolt and pop it off? Well, well, look what I did to this bolt. And then I couldn't get it out. I think I took a little video of me. I, I had to grind the corners off the bolt so it'll fit down in the three quarter threads. I think it's a three eighths bolt. And then I had to, I had to drill it. Of course it kept spinning in there. And that's, <laughs> that's what the left handed drill bits and the easy outs were for. And this, I finally got it out with this one. So I went ahead and tried it with a grade 8 bolt. That's what I just did. I stuck the grade 8 bolt in there, but the grade 8 I had was shorter. So I had to cut a chunk of 5 8 round stock to fit in there. And I impacted this bolt in there. And... Uh, did some light tapping on it with a three pound hammer and it finally popped off. So hopefully in all that I did not mess up my threads in there. What an adventure. So my, my clutch is sticking. I, I think it's this inner piece might be swollen from my hydraulic water. Well I suppose I better explain that. There's a technique where you lay this thing on its side like I have it now. You put water in here and you screw this bolt in, you Teflon tape it, screw it in, and it'll pop off. And that worked for me last year. And this year I tried it again and again and again, it would not work. So I went to more drastic measures. But the reason I, I'm taking the clutch off is this shiv should slide up and down. You know, it's a CVT. And it is not, it's sticking on there. I can't even push these apart. This should slide apart. So it's either sticking down in there or the towers, buttons, something's wrong. So I'm, tomorrow while we get 10 inches of snow, <laughs> in April, middle of April, I'm gonna take this apart. See if I can't fix it. It's never a good thing when you got the slide hammer or whatever, big pry bar, three pound hammer, vice grip, generic vice grip, it's a husky. Oh, just to try to get a clutch off. I suppose I'm gonna hear about it from the non-Polaris guys. <laughs> ah, it's my own fault, I'm the one that messed it up. Yeah, I just paid seven and a half dollars for this pipe coupler. I'm going to make a tool to go on there and catch these. It's a specialty tool. Well, what do we have going on here? We got flat stock with a couple holes drilled in them now. We got some flat iron. Oh, somebody's been cutting little chunks off this 5 8 round stock. Uh huh. Uh, don't listen to that music in the background. It's garbage. I don't know what's on the radio right now. But my little tool. Okay, I've got it clamped down now. And I broke it loose with the monkey wrench here. Can't call it a pipe wrench. And look at that. It worked. It worked. 
Now I have to screw this spider off, which is this triangle piece. I'm going to have to build something that'll catch it here, here, and here. Don't want to put any pressure on the towers here. It'll probably break them or bend them. So somehow I got to catch this triangular piece and twist it off. I did buy a, a rusty pipe for $4.19. I was thinking about doing something like this while well, putting a plate. We'll see. I'm going to cut two and a quarter inch chunks off of this so I can weld on the bottom of this piece of my drive shaft off my pickup and use that as a part of my tool. Why not? Ready? See how this works? Ready? Wow, that was kind of lame. Well, that was like the worst ever, and they're not even the same length. Oh well, close enough. The other thing I like to do is I like to use green extension cord. Then I know it's green energy. It's environmentally sound electricity. Well, it's, it's starting to come together. <laughs> Should work. So I, I actually took the spider off. I ended up welding a little bit on the inside there because this thing is cast and it was breaking on me or that one weld broke on me twice so you, I don't know if you, you can see how that fits right on that triangle fits like it's like it was made for it doesn't it I ended up using the pipe wrench on this though probably gonna have to weld a socket on here so I can get the right torque specs on it but finally got it apart got the spider off Now I can see what's hanging up in here. I should mention not only did this work, but so did my clamping thing with all the little knobs on there to catch the back of this clutch. That worked too. And good thing it worked well because it didn't work that well. I don't know. I had to body slam this thing. I ended up heating the spider. Well, it's over there. And, uh, I couldn't get it to move, so I ended up jumping on it. Yeah, that worked. Well, there's a, a bushing right there. This thing right here. I don't know what, if some chemicals got on it and swollen, but that is definitely too tight. That should, that should slide on there. I mean, the weights and the pin... And these are all tight everything moves like it should all the rollers on the spider are good the only thing that i can see wrong is this bushing is too tight that's why the clutch was not shifting properly this is the mounting bracket i made to hold the clutch to unscrew the spider and stuff so i just i welded or tacked little 5 8 round stock what I did was I used the 5 8 round stock as a centering and I had to grind this down and taper it a little so it would fit up in the clutch and then I picked a spot put this uh, you know so far out so I picked a spot like right here and welded one and then I stuck one loose next to it and I and I put this on and then I would turn it and turn it back and then I knew that this one was now against one of these ribs because you want them all touching the ribs at the same time so it evenly distributes the pressure on this so you don't break one of these off and I just did that on all six of them and then I used these little clamps to clamp and secure it on there so that's what that looks like just a half inch plate I think it's seven inches wide I'm not sure why maybe eight but that's that's what it looks like to hold that secure so I could screw that apart so my my homemade castle nut remover I just took my four and a half inch grinder well I, I set it on top of the castle nut like so 
and I took a marker and marked what I where I didn't want to grind I like marked there and marked there and then I ground everything in between so it turned out like that there you, you can see that better so that's all I did I made a, a little tool and I just used the pipe wrench on that so that's the other tool I made tool I made <laughs> tool I made was it worth it to make all these probably not I don't know Polaris is really proud of all their tools um, I don't have a lot of money into this I spent half a day on it though because I didn't know what I was doing just kind of designing it doing it out of my garage would have been nice to be at the shop where I had more tools metal working tools but oh well I cut my metal with a reciprocating saw and a little four and a half inch grinder and no drill press or anything like that but oh well it worked I got it apart so what it looks like I'm gonna have to do is order an entire rebuild kit just to get this bushing I'll get new pins and rollers and and buttons and other the bushing in the top plate but I guess that's what I got to do order all of it just to get that I hope this helps somebody that's willing to try to fabric cobble some some stuff together hopefully you can do a better job than I did but maybe this will give you some ideas hey thanks for watching have a great day